Mr. Beast Squid Game is a masterclass in storytelling that any YouTuber can learn from. Even if your channel is not necessarily a channel like Mr. Beast's, you can still take some of the principles from it. So let's start. I recreated every single set from Squid Game in real life. And whichever one of these 456 people survives the longest wins 456 grand. Let me start off this video by talking about the narrative structure of Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast always starts his video with a hook, but you have to understand that there's this concept of macrostructure and microstructure as well. So this video is 25 minutes and 41 seconds long. That is a long video, and that's a very long time to keep someone's attention for. So the way that you do that is that you have to have these multi-layer narratives progressing throughout the entire video. You think of a, a single narrative as the hook, the storyline, and the payoff. But the nature of the show Squid Game is that it itself is composed of lots of mini games, each with their own little hook, storyline, and payoff as well. And so it's a perfect fit for someone like Mr. Beast, who already has that style of storytelling. By having these miniature hook, storyline payoffs that keep someone for much longer, because it's almost like they're watching five five minute videos. And so you can imagine that the retention on this video is gonna be like through the roof comparatively speaking. So let me explain some of the components of a Mr. Beast talk. Um, first of all, you start, I'm gonna literally just go this by second in time because there's so much happening here. But you start off with this. <laughs> so this is just literally this doll's face. That's kind of scary. That's very shocking. Human eyes naturally direct attention to when someone is looking at them because that could mean danger for you, right? Um, there's a lot of movement in here. He always yells, or not yells, but like has a very loud start to the video and it really grabs your attention, right? It's, it's, it's pretty much something that you can't just pass by and be like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't know what this is about, but I'll just skip to the next video. No way, like this video grabs you and keeps you. <laughs> um, created every single this is an interesting shot. So not only has he done that initial thing, but he's actually gone and sort of expanded way out so you can understand what the scale of the thing he's achieved is. So this is a really interesting concept. I, I think this is actually a pretty new thing, but and this is a kind of concept where the hook is the payoff. Um, this is a really weird idea because in most traditional storytelling, even on YouTube, the payoff happens at the end. You know, the 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 end of the video is a bit that should be the rewarding bit. But actually, here, the fact that you've just witnessed this gigantic set that he's made, that's a gigantic replica of Squid Game, that that itself is like a kind of little reward, and that's gonna hook you in for sure. So. Um, let's keep going. Set from Squid Game in real life. And whichever one of these 456... Okay, so that next few seconds is basically hook, 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 hook. There's the tug of war as one other hook. Each of those individual things, like it's really cool to have seen all of those in such a quick succession to be like, whoa, like your first impression when you see all those things in a row is just, whoa, this is a huge video. This is like really, really different. Um, I think what's also interesting from a visual perspective is this is so smart. Like you've gone from bright, which is the first shot, to dark, which is a completely contrasting shot, back to light, back to dark, and then back to light again. So all those visual changes are really, really big. Here, you can see that there's also a lot of movement within the air. So like, even though the, he doesn't create transitions between each individual shot of these cuts because that would be a bit too jarring. But you can see that he goes for these big zoom transitions. Um, they also have their own sound design to indicate that they are a zoom transition, so. I recreated every single set from Squid Game in real life, and whichever one of these 400. So it's pretty subtle in terms of the sound design, but that first transition, you hear this vroom, which is a very much that, like, that just gives it a lot more impact than if you just had the physical movement, you have this vroom aspect of things that really, you know, it, it adds more, much more in terms of the impact. And when he's done that second zoom transition, it's the same thing, that big, it's a bit more subtle, but it's this vroom effect <laughs> in terms of the sound. 56 people. And you can see at the bottom, he always does this. He always has like text that's also popping off very much at the start. He usually uses less text as the video progresses, but certainly in that starting bit, there's a lot of text and it's very, very punchy, right? August wins 456 grand. 
Um, so he's introduced some of the characters here. By having this shot, right, you've actually introduced all the characters of the story in a single shot pretty much already. And so you immediately know what the setup is, what the premise is, the objective of this particular video is very, very clear. And when you have a clear objective, it means that people can have this clear sense of progression towards that end goal. <laughs> The first game we're gonna play is red light, green light, and they have 30 minutes to cross the red line on the other side of the huge room. So without further ado, green light! So this is a classic Mr. Beast thing to do, which is you set up the hook, you get it up, you like be as concise as you need to be, but not more concise. You keep the premise very simple, uh, because if it's something that can't be explained quickly, then it's something that's not inherently shareable with other people. Like it's, or it might be quite difficult to talk about complex concepts to other people. They're just not as shareable as like, oh, Mr. Beast did Squid Game. Right line. All right. There's a little uh, subtle thing there, which is that um, this is a very, very busy, like, bunch of video shots because there's a heap of people in this scene, right? Like, I think Mr. Beast has uh, sort of talked about this at, uh, you know, when he was giving some commentary at VidSummit, but I don't think it's, like, elsewhere on YouTube as far as I know. So, basically, context, people need to be able to digest what's actually going on at any one particular time. And so, by providing context, like, uh, in a way that focuses the individual viewer's attention, you can really get them to understand what's going on a lot better. So here, you look at this, right? Lots of people, lots of people. Um, you got the doll from Matthew Beam who made that. And then you see that there's a lot of people here, right? But, but here, they want you to focus in on this one person because this one person, uh, and this one event is really important because it's going to set up the stakes for this video, right? So here, You've even got her and a call out and she's like highlighted compared to everyone else. Otherwise, it's gonna be very a bit sort of messy to see what's going on And then she dies <laughs> so um, With that immediately you set up the stakes Which is that people like you understand the consequences of losing this game immediately, which is dying in this particular case Oh, oh. And as you can see every single player has a device strapped to them that when they're eliminated it pops and you can see that the consequence of that also goes to um, this little timer, well, timer countdown thing, right? And so that countdown, you can use this in terms of timers as well. Often uh, you see people like Airac do this as well, where they have a timer that gives you a continuous sense of progression throughout the video. Um, that, that is something that's a very common te technique too. Now, I should also explain a few other things, uh, a little bit about the hook. So the hook as well, it meets the viewer's expectation immediately. That's really, really important because people want to, when people click on a video, they want to know that they you know, got what they clicked for. <laughs> so um, if you don't have that, then you're gonna get a huge drop off at the beginning. Um, the objective is easy to understand. Um, there's a few elements of familiarity, which is itself a reward. So for example, having the Squid Game music itself, having the Squid Game text, having the set, all of those little things, it's like the same as when you see someone that you like and they walk in through the door and you're like, oh my God, it's Jeremy or whoever. Like that sort of reward that you get from seeing something familiar uh, is a really, really important one to capitalize on. I'm gonna skip forward a little bit. Look how close they are to the finish line. It is do or die for most of these people. So um, this is something that Mr. Beast does a lot, which is that he reminds you what the end goal is. If you, because sometimes it's easy to forget like which direction you're progressing, reminding the viewer that, okay, we're getting here. This is where we're going. <laughs> and um, you know, this is the stakes that are at hand. Reminding the viewer occasionally of that uh, can actually increase your attention as well, because you remind them of why they watched the video in the first place. Everyone look up at the TV. You have four minutes and 20 seconds left. Yeah, that's the number! Green light. Red light. We have our first two finishers over here. Okay, so this is the mini payoff that I was talking about before. Um, this is a genuine reaction. Mr. Beast is happy. These contestants are happy. Um, you can see that they're very genuinely happy. And so, like, fundamentally, a lot of what a, a lot of the beauty of Mr. Beast is not in the scripting because. Fundamentally, Mr. Beast videos are the opposite of overproduced, overscripted. This is a huge production. This is like $3.5 million worth of a video. But at the same time, even if you have that high level video production, what you don't want to 
be is overproduced because we live in this world where fundamentally authenticity is something that's extremely valuable. If something seems like overprepared, it's like not funny anymore. So um, like having this level of organicness, uh, I don't know if that's the right word, but <laughs> um, having this level of organicness is something that is very, very valuable in YouTube videos specifically. Okay, so this is a homage to the original game, of um, the original series. Two hundred and thirty-two of you survived. If you look above your head, you'll see the four hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars you're competing for. <laughs> I don't know if anyone noticed that actually, but actually, this is zero. This is <laughs> it says zero. <laughs> it's cash prize zero dollars. <laughs> That's a little bit of a mishap, but that's all right. Now let's move on to Honeycomb. In Honeycomb, everyone gets a needle and a cookie with a different shape on it. And they have 10 minutes to remove the shape from the cookie. But if they break the shape, they're eliminated. All right, so everybody... Okay, so I just wanted to keep that in, just to show you another example of the hook. And this is Mr. Beast also trying to explain ob objective in a very, very clear way. Like, that is a very quick few sentences, but... I can almost guarantee you, he would have spent a very long time thinking about how exactly to word that, practicing the actual wording of it, practicing the delivery of it. As a result, it seems like a really nice smooth hook, but that would have taken a long time to think about it for any hook uh, that Mr. Beast does. Though he's talked about this on the Colin and Samir uh, podcast as well, where like the where he's talked about with an FBI agent, like I tied up this FBI agent, here's hundred thousand dollars or whatever good luck <laughs> and um, so he thinks a lot about these hooks and I think that that's one of the most important parts of the video because if you don't get the hook right then people just drop off unfortunately Buddy, I'm gonna need you to get in the line in front of one of these question marks why did you pick this one just like the middle basically you don't think it's umbrella umbrella, it's umbrella. You're, did you even watch it again no. <laughs> There's so many of these so there's a certain amount of relatability there. A lot of the audience, even though there's a lot of people that would have watched Squid Game, there's a lot of people who know this video that know Mr. Beast but don't necessarily know about Squid Game. People are about to get out. Reveal shape number one! <laughs> So this is a little bit of theatricality for no reason, right? And this is this is where Mr. Beast shines quite a lot. Like, there is no reason necessarily for someone to have to smash open the, the shape to reveal it, right? So there's something intrinsically satisfying about something being smashed. There's also this fact that um, you're actually creating hype amongst the people in your video itself to try to get those reactions. And so by doing something this dramatic, it really increases the amount of reaction that you're gonna get from the individual crowd members. And then that reaction and that emotion is further amplified by the fact that there's a whole bunch of people in a line at once. Reveal the second symbol. So here you record the entire crowd. This is, they're going wild, right? <laughs> So capturing all that emotion, capturing individual people's emotions, and capturing people's despair as well. You look pretty nervous over here. Even though you got the star, you're the main character, so you have plot armor. You're yeah. Fine. So this a little bit, that's pretty subtle actually, but they actually, uh, by crediting his, him as 456, they're um, saying that, okay, this guy has got something special about him. But um, throughout the video, this guy, and they, I'm sure they could not have known this in advance, right? But this guy actually becomes someone that gets pretty close to the end. So um, by having this little bit, you're almost like trying to establish a relationship with the character from the get-go. And uh, that, that helps people to, to gain that sense of, oh, like, you know, I recognize this guy, like, and I actually start to care about this guy a little bit. Look, Mr. Beast has talked a little bit about the difficulty of um, trying to establish, like, investment into individual characters within a story. And uh, the trouble is that, you know, if you get someone, if you try to tell someone's backstory, often you lose people's attention. <laughs> and that's a difficult balance. Start the timer! The challenge is underway. So, you just hear them all scraping. So here, it's actually like 
given a little bit of breathing room uh, because now instead of just Mr. Beast talking, you've got, or even you know the Mr. Beast crew talking, you've got the individual focus back on the um, individual contestants here. And then once you have that breathing room, it's almost like a palate cleanser, right? Because when you have something that is actually very high tension, very high stakes, and you know the payoffs are there as well, you can build up that tension. But you can't start with immediately high tension and then go to payoff. It doesn't quite work like that. You actually have to build that up over time, and then you get the payoff. I mean, there's still a storyline here, and it's still progressing, of course. Look at this. We have a successful triangle. Congratulations. Thank you. One other thing I want to talk about uh, is with regards to pacing. So um, I don't know if this has been talked about anywhere apart from one feedback video from Mr. Beast about another YouTuber, uh, but basically you want to try to keep all the best fast paced stuff at the very beginning so that people are invested in the video to start off with. And then as time goes on, you can create these longer and longer narratives um, because people are more invested in the video and so they're less likely to click off. If you try to keep your absolute best stuff and your shorter stuff towards the end, what happens is that, well, people just drop off before they even get to the end, so there's no point. He doesn't know because I brought a light and I'm gonna drop it for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is so smart. <laughs> um, it's these little unexpected bits as well that uh, really make really increase the enjoyability of a Mr. Beast video. Sometimes they're scripted uh, unexpected bits. So for example, like maybe someone was only meant to win a thousand dollars, but then they win like, you know, two thousand dollars instead, something like that. So you can script a little bit of it, but uh, something like this is pretty funny. And unexpected, like, you know, more money does not necessarily equate to like better videos. It's more so these little things that um, make it very rewarding for the viewer to watch. All right, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead to this bit. Don't worry because they're all walking away with $2,000 in cash. So this is everyone that's died <laughs> in the game, right? Like, can you imagine, you have to physically ask them, okay, you're dead, now just please lie down and pretend that you're dead. Stay there until we record this part of the video and then after that you can like move, right? So like, you know, or you could just tell people to, to to leave, but that's not as good, right? So um, there's something a bit extra dramatic about having people uh, pretend to be dead. <laughs> and even just having the different henchmen like on the side, right? Okay. All right, so tug of war. This is a super interesting part of the video. Um, basically tug of war is, you know, on this huge tower, but they've illustrated how gigantic this tower is by providing context again. So here they've got this guy who's just like, obviously uh, a henchman, looking up at this gigantic tower and then you see like, holy moly, this tower is huge. That itself is like a bit of a payoff and a hook at the same time. I don't know how, like, how you do this in other videos, but that's like something amazing. <laughs> and I think that it would be cool if more people did stuff like that. You have to simply admire the dedication to the sets. In fact, a lot of Squid Game sets are actually CGI. So a lot of Mr. Beast sets, this, this video cost $3.5 million to actually make. Um, and that dedication really shows through. I think I, I can characterize it in something Mr. Beast said once, which is that people know when you put an effort towards a video and people respect when you put an effort towards a video. There's always something about a fight that's always very interesting. You should just lose. Oh no, give him motivation. Oh. It's over here. It's us. In this game with Team 9 versus Team 11, they went so hard that this happened. They are going all out. Look at them. <laughs> they broke the thing. That's so funny. But it's also an example of, again, not being overproduced and being like, well, you know, we're kind of just having fun here. <laughs> yeah, this is... As opposed to like being a big film production where it's like everything has to go in a certain way. It's almost like you're like, it's that appeal of the behind the scenes feeling, but this is the scene itself, you know? 
Togo Ward took us from 120 people down to 60. And remember, only one of these people is walking away with $456,000. So again, here's another reminder of the big payoff at the end. Because people at this point might have actually forgotten that. Oh yeah, they're competing for the $456,000. All right, everybody, we have your attention. As you guys know from Squid Games, game number four is Marvels. I don't know if I'd be cheering because instead of letting you pick your partner, there's a little bit of like very subtle. I mean, maybe not so subtle, but like you can see, um, in this in this shot here, there's got he's got some dude like lighting him behind the back, right? Uh, so there's like there, there's a little bit of attention to detail when it comes to things like that where having brighter shots is just more interesting and having better frame shots is just more interesting we have your attention as you guys know from and here so he's lit up by this neon light because obviously what must have happened is there must have been a few shadows and stuff uh, on his face I guess from squid games game number four is marbles yeah. I don't know if I'd be cheering because instead of letting you I don't know if they did this deliberately, but he looks a bit pinkier for some reason. Pick your partner, we're gonna make you partner with your best friend. Throughout this entire challenge, we've been monitoring who Oh no, actually, they, yeah. you've been okay. talking to the most, and we're gonna make you partner up with them. And only one of you can move on. For example, 067 and 431. That's my best friend. <laughs> According to this, you two are roommates and best friends. We did See, this is a, this takes the uh, the emotional concept from the original Squid Game and actually uses it really well because in the original Squid Game, this is spoilers. Well, I mean, this whole video is probably spoilers, but in the original Squid Game, in the Marvels game, when they pick their partners, they don't know that their partners are the ones that they're going to be competing against to eliminate in the Marvels game. So this brings it back by making it so that. Immediately your best friend is the one that you're going to be the one that you're competing against and have to eliminate, right? And so that's a really smart move from a storytelling perspective. Did our research. I have to come home to the house we live in. So this is elevating the stakes okay, again. Okay. You're gonna be a bit awkward. Oh. Wouldn't be able to do it without you. We couldn't have gone without each other. I'm glad I'm with you at the end. Everybody gets a bag of 10 marbles. And they have to agree on a game to play against their best friend. 20 marbles lets them move on, but by winning they eliminate their best friend. Go ahead and start the timer. You can play whatever game you want, but you need 20 to leave. A lot of pairs went with marble games that were played in Squid Game. Odd. Even? How odd or even? Even on the What? What game are you playing? We don't know. One marble at a time is going to take all the. And other groups got creative. What is this game? We're throwing at the bricks, right? If you get the middle one right there, that's one point. But if you hit the bricks in the behind, then it's three points. Everything else is no points until like the clock runs down. Whoever has the most points is the winner. All right. Well, good luck with your game. Okay. Now I want to talk about the sponsorship. I want to talk about the sponsorship segment because this is actually really interesting. And like, okay, like, hear me out, okay? Like, <laughs> hear me out, okay? Like. Um, sponsorship itself can be done in a very boring way, often is a part where people can lose a lot of viewers and a lot of retention. So here's the sponsor of this video, no just kidding. Um, basically uh, this, this sponsorship is well done because it's so well integrated and I think Brawl Stars probably did a pretty good job by letting Mr. Beast run with it and know exactly what his viewers sort of wanted. Um, because it is so easy to lose people here. I'm gonna play it now, so you can marbles. have a look. At this point in the real show, there was an all-out brawl to thin the numbers. So instead, we're gonna play Dachi. You have to use this blue piece of paper to flip that red one on the ground by throwing it. The first 16 of you to flip your red square moves on to Glass Bridge, which is personally my favorite game. Okay, so really interesting, right? He's about to do the sponsorship segment. He's created a hook for the game that they're just about to play, but he's also said, okay, if you wait until after this ad, we're gonna give you one of the most interesting parts of this video, right? So pretty much you have to watch this ad <laughs> in order to, to progress to the next part. Everyone throw. Oh wow, we didn't even get anyone. And while they're fighting for their chance in this competition, I wanna tell you guys about Brawl Stars, who helped fund this video, which cost over three and a half million dollars. I'm gonna tell you guys about Brawl Stars, right? And so Mr. Beast has this very, very tricky thing, which is that he has got one of the most broad audiences on YouTube because he's literally just got one of the biggest audiences on YouTube. So to try to create a sponsorship segment that's both relevant and inter interesting, that's difficult. Thank you so much. Throw. 
Brawl Stars is a mobile game you can play at home, on the go, in this arena, wherever you want, against millions of people across the world. So you can see he's touched on it briefly for a few, like literally in one breath, in one uh, long sentence essentially. And then he's gone back to the video to make you not feel like you've just heard an ad piece, but you're still watching the actual video itself. Because you're essentially still watching progression. In fact, he's timed this payoff so well um, to make it even feel like, you know, you just watch a little bit of ad, but like by doing that, you feel rewarded somehow. <laughs> Congratulations! It's three minutes of adrenaline-filled mayhem, and they have 12 different game modes, including their own battle royale, which is kind of similar to what we're doing here. Kind of similar to what we're doing here, so tying it back to the video to make it not seem like a randomly plugged in ad, to make it not uh, seem like it's just something he, he did to sell out, you know? And we go back to the video, more payoffs. So far, which means only seven places remain. Do you, you said you played Brawl Stars? Oh, you both played Brawl Stars? What are your thoughts on Brawl Stars? That's pretty fun. It's a mobile game. You can download it on Android or Apple. I didn't um, tell them to say this. <laughs> so that's also interesting, right? Because because of the way that you'd have to advertise, it's going to be more effective to advertise if you're um, talking about the different thing that you're advertising and mentioning the name a few times. If you mention it once, people are just going to forget it. But here, you can't just like obviously say Brawl Stars, Brawl Stars, Brawl Stars, Brawl Stars again and again because you know people are going to get bored. They already heard it. They're going to feel a little bit like not happy that uh, that sponsorship had happened. So by getting other people to like talk about Brawl Stars and just you know having the different integrations with the Brawl Stars logo on the actual um, like money ball thing, having the Brawl Stars on the uh, different cards that they're playing with, like all of those are like pretty subtle mentions, but that makes it actually much more effective for the actual sponsor itself. Um, without making the viewer feel like they are being sold to too much. That is a very, very tricky balance. And I, I think that this sponsorship thing is a really unique aspect of YouTube that's hard to get right. And then Mr. Beast, I think, has really got it right. <laughs> So fundamentally, it's this blended sponsorship model. Over 50 different characters you can play as, from a vengeance-driven robot to a cactus named Spike that kind of looks like Nolan. Hey! And like all our contestants, you are leaving with two thousand dollars for free today. Every single person that plays Brawl Stars in the next seven days, I will personally be giving you a free prize. So if you haven't already, go download it. Okay, this is what I don't know if there's a term for this, but I'm going to call this an incentivized call to action. Now. If you create a call to action which is describe, sign up, buy this, uh, download this, um, and you do it in a time limited fashion whilst giving the person a reward, they're just much more, more likely to do it. Um, I think that this is much more important when you think about subscribers, but I will tell you that at the end of this video because um, that's when Mr. Beast talks about it, about how to actually make getting subscribers much more effective. If you yell, thank you Brawl Stars before you throw, I hear you'll flip it. <laughs> Oh my god, it's true! Thank you, bro. <laughs> and for the 14 of you that didn't flip it, I'm gonna have to eliminate you. Oh, that was so in sync. Oh my god. Final game of Beast Games. So I think you guys can piece together what we're about to play. Musical, Musical chairs. chairs. Musical chairs, yeah. Let's test my hypothesis. Raise your hand if you know how to play Squid Game. Exactly. That's why we're doing Musical Chairs instead, because we're not Koreans. So this is a really smart way to do things. He understands his audience and he understands that they, like Squid Game is a complicated, well, it's not that complicated, but like it's a hard game to understand if you don't know the actual game itself, right? And even if you watch Squid Game, like I don't feel like I really understood how to play the actual Squid Game game itself. So, um, but instead of having to try to explain it, potentially losing viewers, because there's a lot of cognitive friction to try to understand, and then getting into the game where they don't really know what the objective or outcome is, he just changes to musical chairs. That's really smart. Um, not only that, the other smart thing about it is that like he's avoided controversy by because there obviously would be controversy if someone was like, uh, like, oh, like you know, you really should have included the original Squid Game game. Like, why didn't you do that? And like, I'm sure that a lot of the internet would be like, ah, oh, like you know, Mr. Beast, you know, just did musical chairs instead. But like by asking people hypothetically, like, you know, do you guys know Squid Game? No, like no one raised their hand, right? It's like, okay, like there is a very visual reason as to why 
we're not including the Squid Game game in this video, and this is the reason. So I anticipate your comments in advance, and this is my answer to it. So that sort of anticipatory, like, it's almost like forethought into knowing what people are gonna say about a particular video and addressing that before they even have the chance to say it. And I think that is also really, really smart here. Start circling. Start the music. Carl, you can stop it whenever you want. Carl, do not look. Chris, don't look. Carl isn't looking, so we can't be biased. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, oh, he got it. I got more, man. Yeah, I'm he's way sure. more. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no. Okay, so here's a really interesting bit of tension because now you're cutting it down. You, you can see it's going, uh, it's coming to the very end, right? So there's no way at this point, if you got to this point of the video, there's probably no way you're going to not keep watching until the end. You've only got like six people left, so you might as well complete it, right? I'm just gonna skip ahead to almost the end. Okay, the music has... Oh, me. They were against me, oh bro. They plotted on me. You have been eliminated. Open up the coffin. Thank you for coming out, man. <laughs> I love you. The coffin is a lovely bit of theatricality. It's like, there is no need for him to enter the coffin. In fact, he probably just gets out of the coffin as soon as, like, the shot changes back to them. But, like, it's the, it's those little things that are really rewarding. Energy. At the start of this video, we had 456 people, and now we're down to these two. Yeah! Okay. okay. I'm going to take this chair right here. You guys gotta keep moving the entire time. No stopping. And okay, covering. the music this is cropping up. Everything is building up. The reminder of the stakes is coming up. Like, why are they doing this? What's the payoff? And here we're trying to draw out <laughs> for as long to increase that tension and therefore increase the payoff too. Four hundred fifty-six thousand dollars because you pause the music. This is longer than the previous bits. When will he pause it? When's he gonna pause it? Sound effect. Then you've got this this aspect. Like this is the biggest pop up ever, right? You got confetti. You've got like you know all the victory sounds. You've got him going crazy. A very shaky camera to symbolize his assignment. And something sweet for the other contestants so that people don't have that bit of feeling, especially if they like that particular person. So all this is really smart. I mean, Mr. Peter is also just a good guy too. And with that 079, you just won $456,000 and officially won the very first Squid Game in real life ever. Congratulations. <laughs> this payoff is crazy too. Hit the subscribe button. You have seven days to win $10,000. And obviously... Okay, so this is the incentivized subscribe that I talked about before. So basically, like... Not only does this work on Mr. Beast's channel, this works on any channel. Um, if you incentivize to subscribe, then with money or, I know, a free resource or something, then um, it basically greatly increases the chances that people are going to do that subscription. Um, I noticed it's the first time when Mr. Beast did the Colin and Samir interview where he said to Colin and Samir, hey, like, if you guys just offer $1,000 to one of your, uh, someone who subscribes in the next The uh, end, 10 days as always, is going to be extremely then, quick. Like, this video yeah, is an extremely that, good video to, to learn good storytelling techniques was right. because being able to do that gives you more retention like and being able to get more short, retention gives you more views for your videos. Basically. And that wasn't just because of the fact that um, that Mr. Beast interview was really popular. It was because I did that incentivized type thing. Um, so I think that's really smart. And I think that that's something that any YouTuber uh, could take. And one last thing, if you want to take your YouTube videos to the next level, I've actually created a course just about YouTube storytelling for retention. Here we go even more into depth about what makes a good hook, what makes a good structure of a video, the language you can use and viral idea fundamentals. So definitely check it out. Links in the description below. I promise it's really, really useful. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more case studies like this. This is Darby Analysis Channel. I'll see you in the next video.